Hello guys and welcome back to the Sask Dutch Kid YouTube channel. My name is Jan Kilstra and today before we get into the portion of the video where we're doing some work around the farm, I'm going to be telling you guys about our dairy farm. Now I realize we got a ton of new subscribers to the YouTube channel and I got to say thank you to everyone who did decide to subscribe to my channel. Uh, it means a lot. It's really cool to see a bunch of you guys showing up and uh, thank you. I feel like it's important to go over what our farm is, you know, how many cows we milk, how many acres of land we're farming, just because there is so many of you new people here and I haven't exactly ever done that. So we're gonna start off today's video with that. We milk about 240 cows right now and we're currently growing. We wanna get up to about 280 to 300 cows. We have a goal of production and we're gonna milk however many cows it takes to hit that production. And we farm about 2,100 acres of land. Now the question is going to be how many of those acres are actually for feeding the cows and the answer is about four or five hundred acres go to making silage, growing it for the cows and the rest we combine and sell as cash crop. The crops we grow out here are canola, peas, barley and wheat for the most part and there are some lentils and some other kinds of peas and stuff like that around here but those are the four crops that we stick to. We also raise all of our little steer calves. Um, we don't get rid of them. We raise them right up to 1,500 pounds like feeder steers outside in the corrals. That's a quick little blurb about our farm here. Now let's get into today's video. Good morning, guys. We're just grabbing the first group for the milking parlor here, uh, group one. And you guys will notice it's pretty foggy in our barn right now. That's because it's almost minus 30 degrees Celsius outside. And the cold air comes in here. It mixes with that humid air that the cows give off. They make it all humid and it gets foggy in here. You can really see those air inlets letting air in as those chimneys suck the air out. Come on, ladies. When the ladies are being milked and I'm scraping the group, we gotta leave the cows somewhere and they come into this alley here that walks them back to their group. We just lock it off here and the cows come out of the milking parlor, come through the sort gate area and the foot bath and then they just wait in here. I'm standing at the back of group two here and yesterday when I was grabbing these cows, I noticed there was a bunch of ice here along the back slot and that's because the air inlets at the top of the roof there, they were way too far open and that's because the actuator wasn't working entirely right. That's a little blacking on the roof there. That's the electric motor that runs these flaps, opens them and closes them. So they were way too far open and there was way too much cold air coming in. So we called one of the guys that installed it. He came out here, had a look at it, did some stuff to it, fixed it up. And now there's less ice back here because those flaps are where they're supposed to be. With this minus 30 degree weather, the ventilation needs to be on point because we cannot be letting too much air in, otherwise it'll get close to zero. And then I'm gonna have to go ahead and unthaw all these water bowls and I'm not a huge fan of doing that. So we try to keep it above zero in here. This skid steer wouldn't start yesterday either when I came out here. So we just plugged it in so that the block heater could keep the engine warm. We also got some new tires on this thing. The other ones were pretty much bald. They were showing the threads coming through already, so that was definitely time. This is a lot more grippy. This is one of our flip up gates. We have one of these in each group and the skid steer is gonna be a lot taller with those new tires, an inch and a half. And we already barely fit underneath this thing with those old tires on there. So we're just gonna take it really slowly and make sure we don't hit this. That was not bad at all. I thought uh, I would hit it for sure, but looks like we still got a little bit of room.
always rake the beds after I scrape the manure to the back of the barn just because I always get a bit of a ridge of crap on the edge of the beds and this way I can rake it right away off when I rake the beds. Just grabbing some coffee here and I've checked the weather up here. It's minus 27 degrees, but it feels like minus 33. So it is a little bit cold outside. and fill the feed wagon for the milk cows. This is probably the worst job to do when it's this cold out because all of the augers are super slow, the belts slip really quickly, and all of the hydraulics on all the equipment are super slow just because it's so cold outside. I'm gonna put the GoPro up at that auger there and you guys will be able to see why it's so bad when it's cold. That auger is gonna slip a little bit with that belt there before it actually starts going. Last February was pretty cold, we had minus 40 a couple days and when I went outside to feed with this loader last year, those hydraulic lines that go up and move the gravel for the bucket there, three of the four lines busted within a week. That's how cold it was. So it's pretty hard on equipment, especially the hydraulic lines and that's why it sucks when it's so cold. But it's just something we gotta deal with out here. Luckily, um, if a line blows on this loader, I'll just go park it in the shop, I'll grab our case loader and start using that and hopefully a line doesn't blow on that one. sucks because the heaters won't work in the tractor then. The mixer wagon is mixing right now. We just put water in there and we're gonna let it mix for 15 minutes to thoroughly let all the grain mix up in the ration and then we're gonna dump that tonight. I want to move some pallets of feed around so we're gonna hop into the skid steer, put the pallet forks on so that way we can grab some pallets and move them around. door clicker here it's got three remotes this is the north door for the barn and the south door so that's for the drive through feed alley there that's our south door right there and we have our sound room door so I can just click it 
Then that door starts opening up. Makes it way handy to be going in and out of the doors of this thing. That's the pallet of stuff we want. So I'm just gonna come in here. I'm not even gonna bother moving this stuff out of the way. We'll just use the pallet forks. Definitely a bit of a load for that skid steer, but it's got it. Those new tires definitely help. That's Energizer, we feed it to the cows. It's kind of like a palm fat. It brings up their butter fat content in the milk. And the reason why I wanna get it in the shop is because it's heated in here and that stuff is freezing up. So last night I was walking through the barn doing a barn check at night and I noticed a couple little chunks. They're about, you know, that big or so. And there's, those chunks were in the feed and that's really, really bad. This stuff needs to be mixed 100% perfectly through the feed and there can't be any chunks of it because the cows need to get exactly about 400 grams of this stuff otherwise some will eat more and some will eat less and that's really bad. fed here just a little bit about our winters they're super long you know we can get those really cold temperatures for maybe six months out of a year uh, which really sucks it is what it is but that's gonna be it for today's video guys if you guys enjoyed make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below check out the Instagram page at Sask and I hope to see you guys in the next video thanks for watching